I had never visited the soap factory until um, this past October when Ben thought it would be a great idea if I came out and looked at the space. And I did, and then I kind of made my final artist selects based on who I thought would respond the best to the space or make the best use of the space or um, could do projections or something, and their work kind of fit the, the theme of Frontier Preacher um, in kind of this new frontier time. Um, I really like the industrial background for, for the, the hang, you know, uh -huh. the, uh, uh -huh. and they showed me some of the um, sort of detritus around outside that, that I might be able to make. The piece in this room um, is comprised of a lot of salvage, of course. I'm used to working with salvage from the Katrina piles, and I'll be using a lot of tubular elements, um, lightweight ductwork, conduit, um, rope lights, and I'll be encasing them in fabric, in, in um, transparent, translucent fabric, sort of like a, a tool party dress sort of thing, and uh, making sleeves for all of these tubular elements. It will be draped and, and convolutedly hanging down from the ceiling, and I'll be utilizing things that I find here at the soap factory as well. Um, we've been digging through some piles, and uh, um, it's riffing on the theme of um, our culture as a produ productive culture, a manufacturing culture, and we, we've built ourselves on this ethos of the working man and the pride of working with your hands and making things, and we are no longer that culture, yet we base ourselves on that model and paradigm, and so I am tentatively titling it, it Cinderella's Last Stand, and it's, it's about the, because we, here we are in a disused factory, of which there are many up and down the river, um, what are we doing next? What, what is the next, the new millennium, the new option for us to move into if we're no longer producing things? And there are many different levels to explore with it, and, and as with most installation, it will alter as I work on it. I'll get, I'll get these splashes of inspiration and add layers to it. But um, working from afar, it's kind of hard. You know, I only had the description of the space to start working with, so I started gathering materials and get, getting some ideas together, and this is how far I've gotten. But we're only at the beginning stage of the process now that I've, I'm in the space. How big, how big would it be? Like how, well, this is the next question, is that, um, because... I need to see this, the space first, and then we actually need to assemble quite a lot of material for me to make it. All right, well, that works. Okay. In this space, I'm bringing a piece that I, I already have. Um, it's called Heal, and it's made of 50 pounds of recycled surgical scrubs. And I'll, I'll, there's a cast aluminum element to it as well, another piece that goes with it. And it is um, about the demise of our healthcare system. And it was using um, New Orleans as the canary in the coal mine for the rest of the country because after Hurricane Katrina, we had no healthcare whatsoever. The doctors left, the hospitals were closed, there was no healthcare. It didn't matter whether you had insurance, not insurance, wealthy, not wealthy, um, there was no healthcare. And it's picking back up, but, um, but really, that is the situation that the rest of the country is coming to because, of, you know, whatever the financial structures are that are in place, it, it hasn't been a very well-working model. So um, it's, it's a very large quilted piece um, with these elements of, of, of garments, um, and light is projected through it, and it produces a, a sort of tessellated mosaic-like pattern on the floor and in the shadows there's going to be a snake-like form and um, people can draw whatever conclusions they like from the piece but um, it's very colorful it should be good in this little alcove for the longest time most of my pieces were Katrina based for one thing I was working with materials I was pulling out of the streets um, but I also I was displaced for six months and it's um, I tried to move back when they opened up my neighborhood and I became ill. I mean, the, it was just so toxic that I couldn't stay there. So I ended up staying away for six months and I'm, you're staying in other people's houses, you know, and, and I, I had to work. I was, I was really, really obsessed with making work. And I guess I, it was how, I was how I was processing things. I, I, there's, a, there's a big movement within New Orleans and without New Orleans. Uh, okay, enough Katrina already. And... Um, I, I, my work is 
moving away from that. I know it seems as if I'm obsessed with it, but um, it now it, it 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 colors my work and inflects it. But it's I'm not focusing on Hurricane Katrina as a theme by any means. I'm if I refer to it, it is what Hurricane Katrina has to teach the rest of our country. And I think the, the victims of the floods in the Midwest and the fires on the West Coast and, and tornadoes everywhere are finding out that we, we don't really have much of a support system. There's, there's not much in place. And we need to be proactive and start to pull together as a country and help each other more and get our systems to work and our infrastructure rebuilt. Uh, so it's, it's moving me forward into broader themes and hopefully any reference to Katrina is used only to remind people that there but for the grace of God go you. (laughs) 